Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I'm out here on one of my favorite northern Wisconsin lakes, but I'm out here at a time I've never fished it before. The water temp is still in the mid 60s. And even though it's middle of September, that's pretty warm for this time of year. When I, Every time I fish this, it's late in the year, like late October, November, the fish are in their wintering stages. So I'm kind of curious to see how it fishes. Uh, it's not a numbers lake. Generally, it's a better sized lake. And it's one of those places in the winter you can fish all day. And if you don't make the right cast, you're not going to get bit. So I'm curious to see if I have better action now or if it's just one of those things where maybe I catch one or two. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to start probably up on some flats, looking to see if I can see some cruising active fish. I'm going to be throwing one of the new hover rigs. Uh, if you're not aware, we did come out with all six of our hover rig sizes in a non-weedless manner. So they don't have to come with the weed guard, so you don't have to pay for the weed guard, so they're a little bit cheaper. Uh, just ready to go from that standpoint. I'm going to be fishing. I'm probably going to start with a black four and a quarter uh, Max Scent Flatworm by Berkeley. Uh, black, I'll probably throw a little Gobiashi too. We're just going to see if we can generate some bites. I'm really curious to see how this lake fishes when the water temp is this warm. So why don't you come along with me? Maybe I'll point, point a few things out that'll help you guys catch a few fish. And hopefully we'll catch a few fish. So let's go try. All right, for you, those of you that are not familiar with the hover rig, real simple, the rig, it's a little bit different, but all you gotta do is take your bait, start a quarter inch behind the head, and then thread it on like you normally would. Thread it up to the point where you think it'll cover the whole hook, probably right about there. You can measure it out pretty good too. Slide it up over the weight, and then you go, what do I do with this guy? This is the best way to do it. Put your index finger on the eye of the hook, Grab the plastic, pull the plastic up a little, but push with your index finger. And that'll push the bait right in and then push down on it, lock it in place, there you go. So now this is gonna spiral and glide in the water column a lot different than any other bait. Gives the fish a completely different look. And we're gonna see how they like it on this lake. Not a giant, not what I'm here for, but it's not a bad one. Come here, Man, you are a light colored fish. Almost a two pounder. Healthy. This is a pretty classic looking flat type spot. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a rock vein that runs out into the into a deep portion of the lake. And I catch them way off the tip of it. It's basically a long point is all it is, but I do catch them off the tip of it in the winter. So it would make sense to me that these fish are just slid up on top of the top of the point where I don't ever fish. Again, not necessarily the quality I'm after, but hey, it's a, a keeper and he bit it pretty quick. So maybe that's a good sign. Maybe we can get a, maybe we can run into the big ones. The thing is a lot of times these lakes, like it's, it's weird. It's like in the fall and the cold water periods, that's when the big ones show up. And I don't know if that has to do with, you know, they're out roaming or doing whatever 
And again, I, I've never fished this lake in the summer. I've never fished it any time other than late fall. So I don't know, you know, I'm sure in the spring you can catch some big ones for sure, but it could be the type of thing where, uh, you know, you really need to be here at the right times to see the right caliber fish. The rest of the year you catch a lot of fish like the one I just caught, which would be an anomaly during the cold water fall period. But I don't know, we'll see. Maybe there's more here. That did not take that long. A lot of times what I like to do is let it fall to the bottom. And once I see my line laying on the bottom, I give it a quick little, oh, God, just, oop, that's a little better. Just like that, guys. I give it a quick pop and what happens with the hover rig is it goes darts to the side, left and right. That's a little better. Still not quite what we're after, but that was awesome. Perfect time and fish, good job. Oh, he just came off. Well, that's what we're after. I gave him a little bit of slack line there and he took it to my advantage. It was probably a two and a half, two and three quarter. But again, that's just demonstration wise. You know, you can, you can fish this thing so many different ways. You can fish it up in the water column where you're kind of just shaking it at the depth that you want, swimming it, and it'll like kind of walk the dog and just kind of hover, hence the name hover strolling. Uh, but I love to fish. I love to fish it kind of similar to a net, although when it hits the bottom, I love to do what I just did there. I, I let it fall to the bottom and then I give it a quick pop. And what that does is the bait, instead of coming vertical, it goes left or right real fast, like a, like a crayfish or, or a minnow trying to get away. You know, it's not a natural movement to go straight vertical. It's more natural for it to run left or right. And that's exactly what happened in that instance where it's like, you know, you've got, you've just got the fish, you know, they, they follow it down probably. And then when they see it on the bottom and when you give it that pop to go left or right, that creates that reaction strike. It's a really easy thing to do that can make a huge difference for you. But I mean, that's two fish pretty quick right on this little rock vein up on the top. So let's see, maybe there's a few more. better. Not a giant, but better. They really are not that aggressive today. They, Every bite I've had has come and just picked it up off the... Just picked it right up off the... Chunky. Oh, there's one. Not a bad one. That's more like it.
That's a good one. Look at the red eye on that fish. Beautiful. Still have the exact same flatworm that I started with on the old, this is the 332nd non-weed guard hover rig. That's the one, that's a four pounder. That's what we're after. Oh, got us, got us. I'll take it. Some fishing, I've got a big flat here. Uh, and then it drops off into the main part of the lake and i've got some rock piles scattered you might be able to see them there's dark spots scattered around i'm kind of staying on the edge i really feel like these fish should be feeding on these piles i mean the water temp is still 69 degrees which is like summer temperatures even though today is what the 20 22nd 23rd or something like that of september it's really warm for this time of year so I, I feel like there's gonna be a lot of fish that are moving up onto these flats. So I'm, I'm starting on the edge, working some of the edge and moving up. Every fish I've caught so far has been on the edge, which makes sense to me. I mean, I think there's a lot of fish that are starting to, um, you know, starting to think about moving deeper just based on time of year. I mean, the, the amount of daylight is significantly shorter this time of year. So when you're talking about that that triggers to the fish you know that they probably are moving up to feed and moving back and, and riding the brake line probably could pick up a topwater bait too and cover some water the problem with the topwater bait is they're either on it or they're not and based on every one of my bites today i think if i'm right has come after i pop it off the bottom like it, i let it go to the bottom and then i snap it and they're, that's when they're eating it. It's very much a reaction bite, which generally is not what you want for a topwater. I will tell you, one of the keys right now, you know, I, I know that this bait sinks roughly a little less than a foot a second based on it gliding around. So I'm, I'm counting every time it goes down so that I know when it's on the bottom. I can line watch, but in some, some positions, the little bit of wind we have is keeping too much of a breeze for me to know exactly where my bait is. So I'm, I'm paying a lot of attention to when I'm on the bottom and then snapping it to get it up off the bottom. And, and that has definitely triggered every bite. I mean, we've been out an hour right now, which is pretty decent considering you can come to this lake in the winter after those big ones and you fish all day and not have a bite. I mean, that happens at times. And I feel like I've got pretty good areas where I feel like I know where the juice is. So there's, they're definitely, I'm not gonna say there's huge numbers, but I mean, we're getting bit. The two areas I've checked right now, we've been bit on. And I think that's like, you know, that's pretty decent. God, it came 48, it's strolling. It looked like a good one. He went up on the surface and sucked something. I turned around, I saw him up there. That's a good one too. I threw the hover rig in there and just let it start strolling around. How big are you? You look like a good one. That was awesome. That's the versatility of the hover rig. We've been fishing on the bottom, then all of a sudden see one come up. And we fished it up, suspended in the water column, getting it to walk and twitch around. Let's get a look at you. That's a good one. Well, I thought he was going to be bigger than that. He's like a three and a half. Chunky. Boy, he's got it down too. That's 
another good one. Okay, well, we're gonna let him go. Three and a half pounder. Probably ended there. That was the same. That was the same hover rig flatworm I've used all day. Uh, I think that's five we've caught. I'm gonna have to tie on another one here, but yeah, four and a quarter inch black Berkeley Maxent flatworm. That was a 332nd non weedless hover rig. They're catching them. They're, they're eating it. I mean, they're still in their summer pattern, but they're they're eating it good. Uh, definitely caught some quality again. So go check it out, guys. We just put on the website. Tackle Warehouse is going to have them too any day. Non-weedless hover rigs. They're going to be $5.79 a pack. Um, man, they catch fish. They just give them something different. Like in that case, the versatility of it. We've been catching them off the bottom. All of a sudden, we see one slurp something off the surface. And I just go strolling it through the water column and he came and ate it. That's one of the things I love about that thing. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate all the support. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned. New video coming out tomorrow.